my most sophisticated tool here. One. Yep, squishable. Two. Hmm, lumpy. Three. He's good. Yeah, I'm happy. I hope to speed up this footage and add some lovely music. This is as boring as watching paint dry. Stir, 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 stir. Hi there, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Angie. And uh, I like to do little paintings and drawing urban sketching and stuff. So I wanted to share some of these little art projects with you. So thank you so much for joining me today. Today, uh, I'm gonna be refilling one of my little cheapy watercolor palettes with some inexpensive paints that I picked up. And I'd like to give some background on these on these paints I have here. Um, so originally I had received this package of Reeves watercolor paints as part of an eBay lot of all sorts of stuff and I'm a big fan of getting a myriad of weird little art supplies and seeing what I can make for them and they, I'd had them sitting around for maybe a year or two and um, this little palette is an eyeshadow case that I picked up at a dollar store. The little pans were falling out and um, I got the lady to give me a little bit of a discount on it and I chucked the pans and I sprayed the interior with um, some white enamel paint and uh, let it sit around for quite some time. And strangely enough, I think it, it was about a year ago that I did that. Outside it was the first cold snap and I was spraying the spray paint and I messed it up somehow. I got this really weird texture along the edges and I wasn't sure if it would hold up, but it seems to be doing all right. So I know from listening to other artists that less expensive, more economical paints like this have a tendency to crack up. So when I put them in here, I did add these two additives of glycerin that I got at the local pharmacy from, from the first aid section. I kept on looking for it time after time with the soaps and the lotions. It's in the first aid and um, some of this fancy gum arabic. When I first put these in these palettes, I, uh, I used just a tiny little drop or two on the edge from the edge of a paper clip of these two products in each pan and I stirred it up hoping to keep it from shipping out which it actually it worked fairly well like they receded and they cracked but nothing's falling out and it never has this was about a year ago when I first did it I went ahead and I swatched swatched out the colors on some little scrap of probably inexpensive watercolor paper that I had and I wasn't entirely impressed with the result so I kind of set as the the set aside and hadn't used it much. Um, life also just got in the way of, of me being able to use it. And at the time, when I went to the dollar store and picked it up, I actually picked up two. And I figured the one with the smaller wells, the smaller format, I could use for the more expensive, like high-end high student or pro quality watercolors that I had. And I figured I would fill it up after I'd had some more experience and learned which colors I liked. And it allows for big old mixing areas. I was pretty excited, but they're less expensive. This had the right number of wells with leaving these two for mixing areas. Um, figured I could use this for experimentation and play and not take it too seriously, which I really enjoy inexpensive art materials for that reason. It, there's less pressure to do something well when, it, when it's inexpensive. Um, and it frees me up and I like it. So recently, so that was about a year ago and I haven't done a whole lot, but recently I was sitting around, I was finishing up a class that was had absorbed a lot of my attention, kind of finished the big project and was sitting at the day later and wondering what I could do with my hands and I pulled this out and I started to play with it. I started to do some color mixing using um, the two yellows, the two reds and the two blues. And um, I was, I started to get pretty impressed. I, I was particularly interested in the combinations where the different blues led to different greens, either a vibrant or a more naturalistic green. These are the, some of the secondary colors. And I was doodling around. This little thing is from something else. But I was, I was messing around, cleaning my house and watching some, some show and just playing around. And 
I found myself, I started mixing example using the third yellow here, and I started to doodle these weird things, I'd done this some other time. But uh, I did some shapes and started dropping in some of the secondary colors, and I would found myself making a droplet and leaving the white as the shine, reserving the paper of the white as the shiny part. And I walked away and I came back and I liked it, so I did it again, walked away, did it again, and over the course of the evening I realized that I really liked and became really impressed with how deep some of these colors came and how, um, like, how subtle some of the transitions are between them. And I was just, I was mixing random pans, I was like, maybe I'll add green to my red, I don't know. And I started to realize that these don't look half bad. And to me, this is night and day what I could do between something that looks like this and something that looks like this. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with them yet, but um, I, I was thinking maybe the difference came from the additives I added, or maybe it's the paper. If it is the paper, just to let you know, this square stuff is this 100% cotton B paper. I got it for about 20 bucks about two years ago on uh, Amazon, and I like having, again, this is fairly good paper, um, but inexpensive, so I don't mind goofing around on it, which is why I like inexpensive art materials. And so, since I, I enjoyed this so much, when I first did it, I didn't realize that the colors would recede so much. So some of these, it ends up once they once they dry, they, they barely got filled. So I feel like I want to refill these, and I know I really enjoy watching other people fill up their palettes, and um, I, I figured I would share it with you guys as well, share my process. It looks like when I first did this, I probably started in this corner, and it was a little bit more frugal with what I imagine is the glycerin. I think the glycerin is what really keeps it um, from cracking, helps keep it a little bit moist, and then the gum arabic is probably what helps it flow and blend more easily. But yeah, so today I was just going to go back through and fill them back up. Maybe my tubes, when I got this from eBay, it was uh, I bought, it was unopened. But um, hopefully they haven't dried up. If they have, I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But I was going to fill these back up and add maybe a little bit more than a single drop. Maybe I'll add like three drops of each of these little things and just mix them in. That's the plan. That's the story of my cheap little throw around palette and uh, what I'm going to do today. So here we go.
awesome. So there we have it. I'm gonna let it dry. See, uh, see what it looks like tomorrow or maybe uh, later tonight. And uh, hopefully I didn't add too much glycerin to where it won't it won't dry at all. Uh, we'll find out. But yeah, so that's um, Reeves watercolors. Thanks, guys. All right, so it's been a little bit less than a day now since uh, since I filled these up and I wanted to take a look at them. And I sort of spied them earlier. And wow, look at all the cracking. Cracky McCracker. So yesterday, this one started to look dry. Decided to give it a little touch. It, it wasn't dry. It, it was no good. So um, kind of risking it. Ooh, this one's pretty tacky. Squishy, squishy. Can you see this? So it looks like they got, I did a lot. They developed some deep fissures, but they're still really tacky, like really squishy. Oh, fascinating. This one's a little bit, bit more solid. Some of them are still shiny. I think that one might come up, off on my finger. I wonder how they perform as they are now. Let's give them a try and find out. Try to contain my messiness. Got a pretty inexpensive um, number eight round synthetic of some kind. Got a, a sheet of that B paper. It's sort of a flat side and a textured side, and I think they looked a little bit nicer on the texture side. Handy dollar store spray bottle. Loosen them up, I probably should have been careful of that. Oopsie. And, I don't know, the way that I was doing the, the, the water droplets before, some of them I was uh, pre-wetting the paper. And getting it nice and, uh, getting a nice little bead of water there before applying the paint. Spreading it out, letting it dry, dropping additional colors in there. Oopsie, I think I just covered up my my little shine spot. Hmm. Not wetting incredibly easily, but I do have don't have a whole lot of water on my brush. Let's get a warm color in here. So, to get those unexpected darks, this is essentially what I was doing, as I was just sort of messing around while I was watching something on the TV. And when I got too much water on there, I just I just walked away and I let it dry. Kind of did this deal to help um, help smooth out some of the edges with the various colors.
think that one's going to come out much richer than some of the others. But this ultramarine blue creates an interesting texture, I think, is what added to this one here. That's cool. I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm more into the, uh, the muddier, deeper colors. They seem richer to me. So I'm intentionally mixing things that I know are complements of each other because complements tend to um, mute each other. I think creating a warm base and then dumping a whole lot of cool, cool on t top seems to want to give it the sort of dimensionality. I don't, I don't know. I think it looks cool. I think most of the time. I guess I'll, uh, if I do it enough, I'll come up with some combinations that I can predict and I like, but for now, I'm just messing around. Yep, so even with all the cracking, uh, they seem to be rewettable and still produce some pretty nice uh, color combinations here. They'll look even more interesting, I think, once they're dry. Thanks again.